As I started my master's program, I knew I had to go back to therapy for personal reasons and because if I was gonna ask people to be vulnerable with me, I had to practice being vulnerable first. So I found a highly recommended therapist and I booked that intake session. As I pulled up to her office, I gave myself the ultimate pep talk. I told myself, I'm going in here and I'm going to be an open book. I'm gonna talk about how debilitating my anxiety can be, what it was like growing up dyslexic, how I often felt like I tricked my way through life and I was actually really stupid, would never truly be successful. This is why I constantly needed to achieve things so that I can show myself that maybe I am in fact good at something. How growing up with an Irish immigrant father meant accidents, they do not exist. And having family a country away comes with the hardest goodbyes that don't always turn into see you laters. And I would finally tell someone about that one night in college that left me with so much shame and inappropriate self-blame. This is me immediately following that pep talk. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a millennial. Did I really go to therapy if I didn't Snapchat about it? And being vulnerable can feel sweaty. So I walk into Debbie's office, that's my therapist, and I sit in her white chair, a bold choice if you ask me. She's got a fire going, two dogs. The therapeutic vibes could not have been higher. And then she asks me that golden question, what brings you in today? I pause, take a big deep breath in, and I respond, nothing really. That's it. <laughs> that's all I said, me, the person who dedicated their entire life, went into thousands of dollars of debt to become a therapist, couldn't open up. With time and work, Debbie knew it all and more, and she helped me grow immensely. She helped me find self-confidence in a life without panic attacks and constant self-doubt. She taught me how to do things for myself, not for that external validation. She helped me get a pretty clear ADHD diagnosis that was missed when I was a child. I spent less time worrying, more time living, connecting, and creating my future. When we feel good, we do good. Improving my mental health resulted in my GPA going from a 3.2 to 3.8. I eventually opened up my own practice. I started a mental health TikTok account that grew to over half a million followers and I've been featured in mainstream media like Good Morning America, the New York Times, and the American Counseling Association. I laughed that I just told you how I learned to not measure myself for my achievements and then I just listed all my achievements for you. But what I want you to know is I was functioning and I could have gone on, gone on without therapy. However, making the decision to invest in my mental health resulted in me feeling better internally and achieving more externally. I share this with you today because I want you to know I understand how hard it can be to make the decision to invest in your mental health. I've been there, I've had those thoughts. Do I really need therapy? Maggie gives good advice, I can just call her when I'm anxious. <laughs> and to be honest, my goal today is not to convince you to find yourself a Debbie, but to inspire you to start your mental wellness journey. We can't wait, our nation is in a mental health crisis. One in three people will experience an anxiety disorder in their lifetime. 44% of high school students report feeling persistently sad and hopeless. 42% of women report feeling constantly burnt out at work. Within one decade, suicide rates have tripled for 10 to 24 year olds. And 50% of all lifetime mental illness starts by age 14 and 75% by age 25. We have to start paying attention to our mental health. Although many systemic issues contribute to the nation's poor mental health, like gun violence, housing instability, social media, discrimination, the list goes on. There's also those barriers within us, like stigma and lack of understanding of what mental health is. So let's break down some of those internal barriers. When I talk about mental health, people often think of the presence or absence of a mental health condition. However, mental health is something we all have. Understanding this helps us acknowledge someone can experience poor mental health and not meet criteria for a mental health condition. An example of this is a teen who maybe is going through their first breakup. They don't meet criteria for depression, but they're not eating, they're struggling to get out of bed, and they swear they'll never feel happiness again. <laughs> the World Health Organization defines mental health as our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It impacts the way we think, feel, and act. It determines how we handle stress, relate to others, and make health choices. We've often been fed this narrative that mental health is like physical health. If you hurt your ankle, go to the doctor and get it looked at. If you're struggling emotionally, go to therapy and talk about it. While this is helpful, it is incomplete. It puts the burden on the individual to be able to identify when their mental health is struggling enough to reach out for help. And people are notoriously bad at recognizing when they need help. Many of my clients can quickly tell me the first three digits of pi, but struggle to give me one word to describe how they feel in a specific moment. To put this into perspective, I want you to guess how much time on average it takes from the onset of mental illness symptoms to treatment. 11 years. 
11 years. So when someone's mental health is struggling to the point that they meet criteria for a mental health condition, it takes 11 years for them to get the appropriate treatment. So I'm talking to you when I say I hope you've learned that mental health is something we all have and we can always improve. And one thing I do not want to be a barrier for you is stigma or lack of understanding of what mental health is. My dear friend Stacy and I were reflecting on this 11 year delay and how do we avoid it? How do we help people before they're sitting across from us in our office? And the number one thing we found ourselves coming back to is self-awareness. The ability to recognize what you need in any given moment. We put a name to it. We called it Take Two. But before I explain to you what Take Two is, I want to share with you a time that I needed to take two, but did not have the self-awareness to do it. So during graduate school, before I met Debbie, I had procrastinated on a paper and ended up having to pull an all-nighter to finish it. When my boyfriend knew I was stressed, he brought me dinner to try to cheer me up. When he arrived and there were two mushrooms sitting on top of my chicken fried rice, I started crying. When he asked, why are you crying? I explained, you know I hate mushrooms and now I can't eat this dinner. <laughs> you could literally take the two mushrooms off and you would have never known they were there, <laughs> which is what I typically did, but I was stressed. If I had better coping skills and self-awareness, well, one, I wouldn't have procrastinated my paper, and two, if I did procrastinate my paper, I would have said, you know what, Danny, tonight I just need to cry over some mushrooms. Instead, I ignored him for the rest of the night. <laughs> so building self-awareness daily helps us avoid, and when unavoidable, manage emotional distress. So now I want to share with you how you can learn to no longer cry over mushrooms like myself. We call it take two. So T, time. Take two minutes a day to do a mental health check-in with yourself. This can be in the morning, at night, when your emotions are really high. A, awareness. What are you doing there during this two-minute check-in? Ask yourself, how am I feeling? What do my thoughts sound like? What do my behaviors look like? K, knowledge. Do I need something? And if I do, make a plan for that. E, engage in that plan. So now I want to show you a take-two moment with a TikTok I created. Sometimes my ADHD can make it really hard to do things like brushing my teeth at night. I never brush my teeth at night, so then I don't end up brushing my teeth, even though all day I tell myself to do it. So then don't brush your teeth at night. Do it when you think of it, like during the day. But you're supposed to brush your teeth at night. Right, that'd be ideal, but with your brain and how it works, that's not working for you. So what do I do? Let's work with your brain. So if it's 4 p.m. and you're in the bathroom and you think to brush your teeth, brush those teeth. It's better you do it then than not. At well, I guess that makes sense. So me and this fake client of mine, we took, I would argue, less than two minutes for that tea to check in on our mental health. A, awareness. My client learned that they were having difficulty brushing their teeth at night. K, Knowledge. They learned, we discussed that it's more important that they brush their teeth than they do it at the correct time. So we made a plan. Brush your teeth when you think of it, not just at night. E, engage. This client engaged in that plan and they've been brushing their teeth every day since. <laughs> now I want to back up for a minute. Before I post a TikTok, I typically send it to my mom and I ask for her opinion. When I sent her this specific TikTok, she responded, eh, not your best. <laughs> I just... Hi, Mom. <laughs> I decided to post it anyways, and it received over 5.3 million views and almost 1 million likes. Yeah, moms can be wrong. Who would have thought? <laughs> As I was reflecting on why this TikTok resonated with so many people, I turned to the over 6,000 comments, and there was one common theme, liberation. People felt liberated by the fact that you can take something that you've been taught needs to be done in a specific way, and instead find a way that works for your brain. And that's what Take Two can do for you. Start to build that self-awareness and make small change and watch big change happen over time. So start to Take Two. Leave a notebook next to your bed, create a note page in your phone, and start to build that self-awareness and watch your mental health change. Thank you.